So, this video is about time value of money. So, yung concept ng time value of money is very important in accounting. Especially when it comes to the accounting for financial instruments. So, wag na natin patagalin pa. So, let's proceed. So, what is the definition of time value of money? So, nasabi, the time value of money or TVM is the concept that money you have now is worth more than the identical sum in the future due to its potential earning capacity. This core principle of finance holds that provided money can earn interest. Any amount of money is worth more the sooner it is received. TVM is also sometimes referred to as present discounted value. So, itong time value of money, sabi niya rito, di ba, ito daw ay isang principle in finance. So, ang ibig sabihin daw nito, yung value ng iyong pera ngayon could be different from its value in the future. So, yung magiging value ng iyong pera in the future is more than the value ng iyong pera ngayon. At bakit ganun? Mas magiging mataas yung value ng iyong pera in the future. Dahil, nag earn siya ng interest. So, kaya siya tinawag na time value of money kasi kung tumutubo ng interest yung iyong pera, so over time, syempre, lalaki ng lalaki yung value ng iyong money. Kaya tinawag siyang time value of money. So, and in the concept of time value of money, yung interest plays a very significant role. Pero, anong klaseng interest ang normally ina-apply when it comes to the time value of money. So, sabi rito, we apply the concept of compounding of interest. So, first, let us discuss interest. So, what is an interest? So, interest daw is the monetary charge for borrowing money generally expressed as a percentage such as an annual percentage rate. So, ang most common interest is an annual interest. Kaya kung may makikita kang percentage or interest rate, so kapag walang sinabi kung yun ba ay monthly interest, quarterly, semi-annual interest, so pag silent, hindi niya sinabi, yung interest rate na yun is on an annual basis. So ngayon, dito naman tayo sa types of interest. So basically, meron tayong dalawang types of interest na kalimitan nating na encounter So, yung una is simple interest. So, pag sinabi natin simple interest, this is the interest calculated on the outstanding principal or original amount of a loan. So, pag sinabi natin outstanding principal, yung meaning ng outstanding is ibig sabihin, yun yung portion ng principal na hindi pa bayad. Ibig sabihin, yung portion ng principal na bayad na, it is no longer considered as outstanding. Then, yung next natin is the compound interest. And again, ito yung ginagamit natin when it comes to the application of time value of money. So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng compound interest? So, this is daw the interest calculated on the outstanding principal amount and on the accumulated interest of previous periods and can thus be regarded as interest on interest. So, ang difference ng simple interest from compound interest is under simple interest, yung interest is always calculated based doon sa outstanding principal. So, kung hindi nababawasan yung principal, kasi yung principal is payable in full at maturity, ibig sabihin, yung interest mo every year kung more than one year ang bayaran ng iyong inutang, so, ang interest mo annually will be the same. So, ganun ng simple interest. Ang interest is always calculated based on the outstanding principal. Pero when we say compound interest, so ito yung interest na hindi lang nakabase doon sa outstanding principal. Kasi aside doon sa outstanding principal, ang basis mo ng calculation ng interest kailangan kasama din yung mga accumulated interest from previous periods. So, when we say accumulated interest of previous periods, ibig sabihin, 
yung mga interest na na-compute mo since na nag-start kang mag-compute ng interest are all included in the computation of your current interest. Kaya nga ang sabi niya rito, kaya ang sabi niya rito, interest on interest. So, sabi niya dito, the term is divided into compounding periods. At the end of each compounding period, previous interest are accumulated prior to the computation of interest for the next period. So, yung ating computation daw ng interest, kapag ang interest is compounded, ay nakadepende sa compounding period. So, ang ibig sabihin daw ng compounding period, so at the end daw of a compounding period, hihinto ka muna. Tapos, magkukompute ka na ng interest. So, paano mo kukumpitin yung interest? So, ang interest mo daw will be computed based on the principal at previous interest na accumulated. Ibig sabihin, pinag-ipon-ipon ng interest na na-compute in the prior period. So, yun yung magiging basis natin ng interest for the next period. At ito ang gagawin natin every end ng compounding period. Then, normally, the longest compounding period daw is one year. So, ang most common compounding period is one year. Then, one year daw can also be divided into several compounding periods. So, minsan may monthly tayo, quarterly, or semi-annually. So, ngayon, let us provide an example for simple interest. Pero, mabilisan lang to kasi our focus is compound interest. So, on January 1, 2020, Joe put its 100,000 pesos in time deposit that earns 8% interest rate per annum. In two years, interest is payable at maturity. So, what are the relevant information? So, una, isang principal natin is 100,000 pesos. Then, we have a 2 years na term. So, ibig sabihin, yung time deposit is only available for withdrawal after 2 years. Then, the issue date is January 1, 2020. So, ito yung time na inisyohan tayo ng certificate of deposit for the time deposit. Then, ang maturity natin is December 31, 2021. Kasi nga, 2 years ang term ng time deposit. Then, 8% ang ating interest rate, which is the stated or nominal interest rate. So, when we say stated or nominal interest rate, so yan yung interest rate na nakalagay doon sa ating certificate of deposit. Then, ano ang timing ng ating cash flow? So, anong klaseng cash flow ang meron tayo dito? So, sabi rito, this is a cash inflow. Bakit cash inflow? Kasi, after January 1, 2020, makakareceive tayo ng interest from the time deposit within 2 years. And syempre, maibabalik sa atin yung 100,000 pesos. So, kaya siya cash flow kasi yan yung mga cash flows na makakolekta natin 2 years after January 1, 2020. So, ano yung timing ng cash flows natin? So, kailan tayo makakareceive ng interest and ng principal? So, sabi niya rito, both principal and interest payments daw ay makakolekta natin on December 31, 2021. So, syempre, yung principal, which is 100,000 pesos, after 2 years natin yan na mababawi. And, yung interest, ganun din. Kasabay siya ng principal on December 31, 2021. Kasi nga, the interest daw is payable or makukolekta natin siya at maturity. So, gawa muna tayo ng timeline. So, ang timeline natin will consist of 2 years. So, ito yung first year, then ito yung second year. So, syempre, on January 1, ito yung ating date of issue o yung start ng term ng ating time deposit. So, syempre, dito naglabas tayo ng pera, which is 100,000 pesos. Meron tayo rito ang cash outflow. Kasi nga, naglabas tayo ng pera, idineposito natin sa banko in a time deposit. So, magkano ang ating cash outflow? So, sabi, 100,000 pesos. And we are going to wait until 2 years to collect the 100,000 pesos. So, mababalik sa atin itong 100,000 after 2 years. Pero, syempre, kasabay nun ay yung interest earned within 2 years. Magkano yung interest? So, ang interest natin dito, sabi niya, ay 8%. So, syempre, by this time, alam nyo yung formula for the computation of interest, which is PRT, principal multiplied by rate multiplied by time. So, since ang interest rate natin is 8%, so, ito yung rate. Then, ang ating 
principal is 100,000 and ang ating year is 12 months or 1 year. So, ang interest rate natin for 2020 which is yung first year of the time deposit is 100,000 pesos times 8% times 12 over 12 or just simply 100,000 times 8%. So, that is 8,000 pesos. So, by the end of the first year, 2020, ang time deposit natin has now a value of 108,000 pesos. And yung 108,000 pesos includes yung principal at yung interest na 8,000 pesos. Then, for the second year, ang ating interest is again at 8%. Kasi nga, under simple interest, ang interest is computed based on the outstanding principal. So, yung principal lang ang basis natin, which is 100,000 pesos. And ang interest rate uli natin is, syempre, 8%. Kaya ang interest in the second year of the time deposit is still 100,000 pesos multiplied by 8%. So, ito ay 8,000 pesos. So, magkano na ang value ng ating time deposit at the end of the two-year term. So, that is 116,000 pesos. So, this includes the principal of 100,000 pesos and yung interest earned in two years, which is 8 plus 8, 16,000 pesos. So, ngayon, dito na tayo sa compound interest. So, on January 1, 2020, Joe put its 100,000 pesos in two-year time deposit that earns 8% interest rate per annum. So, pag sinabi natin per annum, annually. Compounded also on an annual basis. Interest is payable at maturity. So, before we proceed, so let us again gather the relevant information. So, una is again, the principal is 100,000 pesos. The term is 2 years. Then, the issue date or the starting date natin is January 1, 2020. So, ito yung start ng 2 years na term ng time deposit. Then, the maturity date is December 31, 2021. And, ang ating stated or nominal interest rate is 8%. Kasi nga, ito yung interest rate that is stated in the certificate of deposit. And, what is the timing of our cash inflow? So, ang tinatanong dito is inflow kasi obvious naman yung outflow natin is on January 1, 2020. Kasi yun yung time na naglabas tayo ng pera para ilagay sa time deposit. So, that is the cash outflow. Pero how about the cash inflows? So, ang cash inflows natin is, again, both the principal and interest payments are collectible on December 31, 2021. Kasi nga, this is a time deposit, no? So, to collect the principal, we have to wait after two years as well as for the interest payments. Kasi nga, sabi rito, interest is payable at maturity. So, ngayon, ganun uli, let us prepare our timeline. So, meron tayong again, two years. So, ito yung first year at ito yung second year. And sabi natin, when the interest is compounded, so ang ating term, yung term ng ating time deposit dito, is divided into compounding period. And syempre, ang sabi, ang most common compounding period is on an annual basis. At sinabi din naman dito na ang ating interest will be compounded annually. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin ang ating compounding period is equal to one year. And since we have a two-year term, so meron tayong dalawang compounding period. So yung first compounding period natin is 2020, then our second compounding period is 2021. Again, anong purpose ng compounding period? So ang gagawin natin is, after every end of each compounding period, magkocompute tayo ng interest. At sa pag-compute ng interest, at the end of the compounding period, ang magiging basis natin ng computation ng interest is yung principal plus all interest accumulated since the start. So, lahat ng interest na na-compute natin since the start, idadagdag yun sa principal at yun yung magiging basis ng ating interest for the next period. So, magsimula ulit tayo sa January 1, 2020. So, dito sa January 1, 2020, meron tayong cash flow pero outflow to. Kasi dito tayo naglabas ng pera at magkano? 100,000 pesos. So, itong 100,000 is an outflow. Then, syempre, 
After one year, the first compounding period, tutubo ito ng interest, which is equal to 8%. So, ang basis natin ng computation this time, since this is the first compounding period, ang basis ng ating interest is only the principal, kasi wala pa tayong previously computed na interest. Kaya, ang ating interest for the first compounding period is simply 100,000 pesos times 0 0.08, and that is 8,000 pesos. Kaya, after the end of the first compounding period, ang value na ng ating time deposit is 100,000, the principal, plus 8,000, the interest. So, that is 108,000 pesos. Then, punta tayo ngayon sa second year, which is the second compounding period. So, ngayon, magkocompute ulit tayo ng interest. Pero yung computation natin dito ng interest would be different now from the simple interest. Kasi kung titingnan nyo, yung ating first year is also similar to our computation in simple interest. Pero for the second year, which is our second compounding period, so the interest will now be different. Kasi ang basis ng ating 8% interest rate per annum is now 108,000 pesos. So again, ang ating basis to compute the interest for the second year is 108,000 pesos. And yung 108,000 pesos includes the principal plus the previous interest rate computed since the start. And since isa pa lang naman ang nakocompute natin previously, so ito lang yung maisasama natin sa principal. So, paano compute yan? So, 8% or 0 0.08 multiplied by 108,000 pesos. So, that is... 8,640 pesos. So, this is our interest for the second period. So, magano na ang ating value ng time deposit at the end of the second year. So, syempre, yan yung 108,000 pesos plus the interest of 8,640 pesos. So, ang value na niya is 116,640 pesos. So, in time value of money, meron tayong two terms na ginagamit which are the present value and future value. So, pag sinabi natin present value, yun yung value niya syempre at the present date. Then, yung future value, yun syempre yung value in the future. Kaya, to apply the time value of money, katulad ng sinabi natin kanina, the concept of time value of money states that yung value ng pera mo in the future is more than the value of your money at the present day. At ito yung basis natin. Kung titingnan natin yung 100,000 pesos natin, kung ilalagay natin siya sa isang time deposit, obviously, magiging mas malaki yung value niya in the future. Kasi nga, nag earn siya ng interest. Again, ang present value is the current value of a future sum of money or stream of cash flows given a specified rate of return. Then, future value is the value of a current asset at a future date based on an assumed rate of growth. So, ngayon, ang una natin gagawin is the present value computation. So, paano ba compute ng present value? Kasi kanina, ang uh, given na natin when we computed the uh, compound interest, is given na yung present value, di ba? Kinumpute na lang natin at the end of maturity is the future value. So, what if baliktad na mangyari? Ang kukumpute natin instead is the present value. Siyempre, kung kukumpute natin ang present value, dapat given ang future value. Kasi from the future value, tayo ay magkukumpute pabalik to present value. So, we have four examples. So, example one, how much an investor should deposit now in order to receive 100,000 pesos at the end of five years. So, ang sabi rito sa example one, magkano daw dapat ang ilalabas nating pera, which is an outflow. At yung outflow natin will be deposited para at the end of five years, makakatanggap tayo ng 100,000 pesos. So, yung 100,000 pesos at the end of five years yun yung cash inflow. Yun nga lang sa future pa yun kasi after 5 years. Pero ngayon, ang tanong is how much should be our cash outflow which is our deposit. And yung deposit na yun is at present. Kaya ang kukumpitin natin is the present value. 
magkano daw dapat ang present value para magkaroon ng future value na 100,000 pesos. Then, for example, number two, how much an investor should deposit now, which is the present value, in order to receive 20,000 pesos at the end of each year for five years. So, ganun pa din, meron tayo itong future value. And yung future value natin is yung 20,000 pesos at the end of each year for five years. So, ibig sabihin, taon-taon, sa loob ng limang taon, ay makakareceive tayo ng 20,000 pesos. Which is, again, as far as the present date is concerned, yung 20,000 is a future value. Future value yun kasi syempre, mangyayari pa yun during 5 years from now. So, those are cash inflow kasi marireceive nga natin yun. Pero, ang tinatanong nating deposit ngayon at present date is the present value. Magkano daw dapat ang ilalabas nating pera para ilagay sa deposit? Then, for example, number 3, how much an investor should deposit now in order to receive 20,000 pesos at the start of each year for 5 years. So actually, yung example number 2 and number 3 are almost the same. The only difference is yung 20,000 dito sa example number 2, which is again, a future value, will be received at the end of each year. Pero for example number 3, this will be received, the 20,000 pesos future value, at the start of each year, again within 5 years from the present date. Then, for example, number four, how much an investor should deposit now in order to receive the following amounts at the end of the first year, 20,000 pesos, then at the end of third year, 30,000 pesos, and at the end of fifth year, 50,000 pesos. For example, number four naman, meron tayo ritong tatlong future values, yung 20,000, 30,000, and 50,000 pesos. So, etong tatlong to, these are cash inflows in the future. So, future values tong tatlo. So, para daw makompute natin ang present value computation, syempre, um, the concept behind time value of money is the use of interest rate. And sabi natin dito, sa baba, we are going to use a 10% annual interest rate for all examples. So, bago natin computein lahat, ang unang-una natin gagawin, which is not necessarily naman na ginagawa talaga, pero mas gusto ko siyang gawin, is yung to determine the timing of cash flows. So, when we say timing of cash flows, kailangan nating malaman kung kailan magkakaroon ng cash flow. Either inflow ba yon or outflow. Para mas madali nating ma-analyze yung gagamitin nating formula in the computation of the present value, which is also applicable in the computation of future value. So, let's start with example number one. So, ito yung timeline natin and yung timing ng ating cash flow. Sabi natin sa example number one, makakareceive dapat tayo ng 100,000 pesos at the end of five years. So, ang ating timeline is divided into five periods. So, ito ay five years. And since hindi sinabi, Yung ating compounding period, since gagamitin natin yung time value of money in the computation of the present value, and ang time value of money is adopting the compounding of interest. And sabi natin, kapag ang interest is being compounded, the term should be divided into compounding periods. And since dun sa mga examples natin, it did not specify the compounding period, how frequent the compounding period is. So, ang assumption natin, it is on an annual basis. So, kung annual basis ang ating compounding, ibig sabihin, in 5 years, meron tayong limang compounding periods. And again daw, dapat at the end of 5th year, meron tayong 100,000 future value, which is the result of compounding of interest. So, ang tanong dito, syempre, since present value computation, to receive 100,000 pesos at the end of 5th year, how much should be our deposit today? Which is a cash outflow. Itong PV is a cash outflow based sa ating problem at itong 100,000 pesos is an inflow in the future. Then, punta tayo sa example number 2. So, for example number 2, makakareceive naman tayo ng 20,000 pesos at the end of each year. So again, yung 20,000 pesos at the end of every year are all future cash inflows. So mga future value yan. Kasi syempre, ito ang present date. 
So, this is the date today. So, sabi, para daw makareceive tayo ng 20,000 pesos at the end of each year, which are all inflows, magkano dapat yung cash outflow natin today? So, that is the present value. Then, for example number 3, ang sabi rito, halos same sa example number 2. However, ang ating 20,000, which are all inflow, ay to be received at the start of every year. Ibig sabihin, dito pa lang makaka-receive na tayong 20,000 pesos, which is the start of first year and start ng every year until the end of fifth year. So, para daw magkaroon tayo ng ganitong inflows in the future, magano dapat ang outflow or deposit natin at the present date, which is the present value. Then, lastly, example number 4. So, sa example number 4 naman, ang timing naman ng ating cash flow ay 20,000 at the end of the first year, then 30,000 at the end of third year, then lastly, 50,000 at the end of fifth year. And again, all these amounts are after the result of compounding of interest. And again, these are all cash inflows in the future. So, kung ito ang mga inflows daw dapat sa future, magkano dapat ang outflow natin at the present date, which is the present value. So, ngayon, balikan natin yung example number 2 and number 3. So, kung napapansin nyo, both examples number 2 and 3 are almost similar. The only difference is the timing of the cash flow. Sa example number 2, at the end, sa example number 3, is at the start. So, ang example number 2 is an example of ordinary annuity. Then, for example number 3, this is an example of annuity due. So, ngayon, before we proceed, let us define first ordinary annuity and annuity due. So, for ordinary annuity, sabi niya, this is a series of equal payments made at the end of consecutive periods over a fixed length of time. Then, when we say annuity due, this is a series of equal payments due immediately at the beginning of each period over a fixed length of time. So, kung titingnan natin maigi yung definition ng dalawa, halos meron silang iisang definition. That they are both series of equal payments. So, dapat daw may series of payments. So, pag sinabing series of payments, ibig sabihin, sunod-sunod. Pero, dapat yung mga payments should be equal. So, yung amounts nila should always be equal. Ang difference nilang dalawa is, sa ordinary annuity, yung series of equal payment is always made at the end of the period. But, for an annuity due, Dapat daw yung series of equal payment must be made at the beginning of each period. So, nagkakaiba lang sila sa timing ng cash flow, ng payment or ng collection. So, again, pag sinabi natin ordinary annuity and annuity due, these are series of equal payments. At syempre, dapat yung payments na yon should be made in equal intervals. Dapat hindi lang yung mismong amount ng payment ang equal. Dapat pati yung interval. Ibig sabihin, dapat kung monthly, dapat yung payment should be made on a monthly basis. Tapos pag sinabing quarterly, dapat ang payment should be made every quarter. So pare-parehas ang interval. So yun ang mga requirements natin for ordinary annuity and annuity due. Ang difference nila, again, is yung timing lang. Kasi kapag ordinary annuity, Ang payment is made at the end of the period, but for an annuity due, the payment is made at the start of the period. So, ngayon, let's proceed to the computation of the present value. So, again, ganun ulit ang gagawin natin. Kailangan nating malaman kung kailan or ano yung timing ng ating cash flows, both for the inflows and the outflows. Siyempre, ang given kasi sa atin dito is yung inflows. Yun yung mga future value. Magkano yung magiging inflow sa future? Tapos, kung given yung future value, ang hindi given dito is yung present value. Kasi nga, yun yung ating hahanapin. So, since given ang future value, kailan natin receive yung ating future value? 
So that is at the end of fifth year. So kung 100,000 pesos ang marireceive natin at the end of fifth year, so magkano daw dapat ang ating i-deposit which is the outflow at the present date which is ngayon. So magkano daw yan? So, paano natin kukumpitin? So, gagamitin natin yung annual interest rate na binigay sa atin kanina which is 10%. So, paano natin makukumpute yung present value ng 100,000 pesos at the present date? So, ang formula natin is 1 plus I raised to the negative N. So, ano ang ibig sabihin nitong formula na to? So, yung 1, syempre, number 1 yun, plus I. Ano ibig sabihin ng I? Yung I means yun yung interest per compounding period. So, since ang ating compounding period is on annual basis, at ang interest natin on an annual basis is 10%, so ibig sabihin, yung I natin for this particular problem is 10%. Kasi ang 10% is the interest per our compounding period which is on an annual basis. Then, ano ang ibig sabihin naman nung letter N? Yung N naman is yung number of compounding periods. So, pag sinabing number of compounding period, syempre, bibilangan mo yun throughout the term. And since we are 5 years at ang ating compounding period is on annual basis, ibig sabihin every year, so ilang taon ba meron sa 5 years? Syempre, 5. So, yan yung ating gagamitin formula to compute for the present value of the 100,000 pesos. So, kapag isa-substitute na natin yung mga amount, so that will be 1.10 raised to negative 5. So, 0.10 siya kasi yung 10% once converted into decimal, syempre, iuusog natin yung decimal places. Kaya yan ay 1.10 raised to negative 5. So, ano ang operation natin? So, ang operation natin is multiplication. So, multiply natin yung 100,000 pesos sa 1.10 raised to negative 5. So, 100,000 times 1.10 raised to negative 5, ang sagot ay 62,092 pesos. So, that is the present value of 100,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, para daw makareceive tayo ng 100,000 pesos at the end of 5th year, dapat magdeposito tayo sa time deposit ngayong araw na to ng amount na 62,092 pesos. At kung tutubo yan ng 10% compounded annually, so ang marireceive natin is 100,000 pesos at the end of 5th year. O kaya naman kung wala kang scientific calculator, so kung yung calculator mo is yung pangtindahan, so yung 62,092 pesos can also be computed as 100,000 pesos divided by 1.10 divided by 1.10 divided by 1.10 divided by 1.10 at isa pang 1.10. Kasi nga, ang number of compounding period natin is 5. Kaya dapat, it should be divided by 1.10 5 times. So, ang sagot niyan is 62,092 pesos. So, ito ang gagawin natin kapag isang beses lang yung future cash flow. So, paano naman kung taon-taon or meron tayong more than one future cash flow, whether the future is an inflow or outflow? So, dito na tayo sa example number 2. So, dito sa example number 2, which is an ordinary annuity, so, yung ating future cash flows are more than one. Kasi dito, taon-taon, in five years, so ibig sabihin meron tayong five future cash flows. And again, yung cash flows natin in the future are all cash inflows. Kasi ayan yung mga amount na may receive natin every year. So kung cash inflows yung sa future, at the present date, so outflow ang ating kukumpitin, which is the present value. Magkano kaya ang present value? And ganun pa din ang gagamitin nating interest rate. Since we are applying the concept of time value of money, syempre we are going to use the compounding of interest. And syempre there must be an interest rate and ang interest rate natin is 10%. So to compute for the present value of the future cash flows, actually yung procedure natin is similar to example number 1. So, same formula, same procedure. 
So, kung ano yung ginawa natin doon sa example number one, basically, ganun din ang gagawin natin dito. Yun nga lang, gagawin natin yun for every future cash flow. Since sa example number one, isa lang yung future cash flow natin, so isang beses lang natin siya ginawa. Pero dito, since meron tayong limang future cash flows, so i-apply natin yung procedure na ginawa natin sa example number one, dito sa example number two, ng limang beses. So, gawin na natin. Unahin natin yung unang cash flow, which is yung pinakamalapit sa present date, which is yung unang 20,000 pesos. So, ganun pa rin ang formula natin, 1 plus i raised to negative n. So, ang formula natin dito is 1.10 raised to negative 1. So, bakit negative 1? Eh, 5 years ang ating time deposit. So, negative 1 kasi yan yung number of compounding period until dito sa unang cash flow natin. Kasi since this is the present date at lilipas lang ang isang compounding period at marireceive na yung 20,000 pesos, kaya ang N natin is negative 1. So, syempre ang operation na gagamitin natin is multiplication. So, 20,000 times 1.10 raised to negative 1, that is 18,182 pesos. O kaya naman, pwede yung katulad ng ginawa natin kanina, kung wala kang scientific calculator, pwede yung 20,000 divided by 1.10. Then, next, dito tayo sa second ng 20,000 pesos. So, ang formula natin dyan is, ganun pa rin, 1 plus i raised to negative n, which in this case is 1.10 raised to negative 2. And bakit siya negative 2? Kasi, dalawang compounding periods ang dadaanan mo bago mo ma-receive yung second na future cash inflow of 20,000 pesos. Kaya, raised to negative 2. At pag yan ay 20,000 multiplied by 1.10 raised to negative 2, that is 16,529 pesos. So, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, kapag wala kang scientific calculator, pwedeng ang gawin mo is 20,000 pesos divided by 1.10 ng dalawang beses. So, ang sagot is 16,529 pesos. Then, dito tayo sa third cash flow. So, 20,000, syempre, ganun pa rin naman. 1.10 raised to negative 3. Kasi negative 3 siya kasi etong pangatlong 20,000 dadaan ang tatlong compounding periods bago mo siya ma-received. At pag minultiply natin ang 20,000 sa 1.10 raised to negative 3, that is 15,026 pesos. O kaya naman, 20,000 divided by 1.10 ng tatlong beses. Then, dun sa pang-apat, so same procedure. So, 20,000 times 1.10 raised to negative 4, that is 13,660 pesos. Then, last, dun sa panghuling cash flow, 20,000 pesos. So that is 20,000 pesos multiplied by 1.10 raised to negative 5. So negative 5 siya kasi limang compounding period ang dadaanan niya bago mo ma-receive yung 20,000 pesos na yan. At pag minultiply natin, ang sagot ay 12,418 pesos. So ano tong mga na-compute natin ito? Ito ang present value ng bawat 20,000 pesos on this date. So, ibig sabihin, kung ito ang mga present value ng mga future values na ito on this date, pag tinotal natin itong lima na present value, ibig sabihin, ang total present value of all future cash flows on this date at present date is 75,816. So, ibig sabihin ng 75,816, ito dapat yung ating i-deposit at day 1 at the present date para makareceive tayo ng 20,000 every year for 5 years. So, kung titingnan nyo yung ginawa nating procedure, parehas na parehas siya dun sa ginawa nating procedure kanina sa example number 1. Yun nga lang, mas tedious siya rito kasi limang beses natin inulit yung procedure kasi meron tayong limang future cash flows. Pero since ang ating pattern ng cash flows or future cash flows is ordinary annuity, so pwede tayong gumamit ng formula 
para mas mabilis nating makompute yung 75,816. So, again, this is only applicable for ordinary annuity. Ang requirement nito para magamit natin itong formula na to is dapat yung series of future payments are all equal at yung interval ng compounding period are also equal. So, ano ang formula natin para mabilis natin makompute yung 75,816? Kasi nga, there are cases, for example, 20 years, tapos annually may cash flow. Kung gaganitohin natin siyang isa-isa every year, masyado yung matrabaho. Kaya gagamit tayo ng formula. At ang formula na yun is 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative n tapos divided by i. So, ganun pa rin naman yung ibig sabihin ng i. Yung i is the interest rate for every compounding period. Then, yung n is yung number of compounding period for the whole term. So, since ito ay isang formula lamang, so yung n natin dito is yung number of compounding period for the whole term. Unlike dito sa formula natin kanina dito, yung n dito is yung number of compounding period until na ma-receive natin yung future cash flow na yun. Pero dito, when using this formula, ang n natin is the number of compounding period for the whole term na. So kapag isa-substitute na natin yung mga variables, so ang ating formula is eto, 1 minus 1.010 raised to negative 5 divided by 0.10. Again, ang annual interest rate natin, yun yung interest rate per compounding period since ang compounding period natin is on annual basis. So, kapag kinumpita natin yan, ang lalabas na sagot is 3.7907867769. So, ang tawag natin dito sa 3.7907867769 is the present value factor of ordinary annuity. So, yan ang ating PV factor. So, para gamitin yan, so yung PV factor natin, kailangan natin i-multiply sa ating future cash flows. Again, magagamit lang natin itong formula na to kung yung future cash flows are all equal at they will be received or paid at equal intervals. So, in this case, ang ating future cash flows are all 20,000 pesos. So, para magamit yan, so 20,000 times the PV factor at pag minultiply mo yan, ang sagot is also 75,816 pesos. So, ito yung fastest way to compute for the present value of ordinary annuity if mas mahaba yung term natin. Especially kung ito kasi 5 years lang, so medyo maiksi lang to. Kung di mo masaulo itong formula na to, itong formula na itong maiksi, ito yung magliligtas sa'yo. Yun nga lang, gagawin mo yan paulit-ulit for every compounding period. Unlike kung sa ulad mo itong formula na to, kahit gaano pa kahaba yung term, makokompute mo yung present value ng mabilisan. Siyempre, kapag sa ulad mo itong formula na to. Pero kung hindi mo siya sa ulado, again, pwedeng ito yung gamitin mong formula. So ngayon, let us proceed to example number 3. So dito naman, so this is annuity due. So again, ang difference nito sa ating example number 2 which is an ordinary annuity is that kapag annuity due, ang timing ng ating mga cash flows ay at the start of the year or at the start of the compounding period. So in this case, in 20,000 natin, dito siya nare-receive at the start of every year. So para makompute natin yung ating present value, may formula din dito na isang formula lang para makumpita natin yung single na present value amount. Pero pwede pa rin natin gamitin yung formula na ginamit natin doon sa example number 1, which is yung 1 plus i raised to negative n. So yun muna ang gamitin natin. So unahin natin dito sa unang 20,000 pesos. So ang formula natin dito gamit yung 1 plus i raised to negative n is 1.10 raised to 0. Bakit raised to zero? Siyempre, alam nyo na kung bakit 1.10 kasi ang ating annual interest is 10%. Pero yung ating exponent this time is zero. Bakit zero? Kasi sabi natin yung n is yung number of compounding period 
na dadaanan bago natin makolekta yung ating 20,000 pesos. At syempre, ito yung date ngayon at dito na rin agad marireceive yung 20,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, walang dadaang compounding period bago natin marireceive yung 20,000 pesos kasi marireceive na agad natin siya ngayon. Kaya ang exponent natin ay 0 kasi again, walang dadaan ng compounding period before we receive this 20,000 pesos. Kaya kapag minultiply natin ito, 20,000, multiplied by 1.10 raised to 0, kung gagamitin nyo ang inyong scientific calculator, ang sagot dyan is also 20,000 pesos. So, ganyan. So, ibig sabihin, pwedeng hindi mo na computein. Hindi mo na siya gamitan ng formula. Kasi, since etong 20,000 is marireceive ngayong araw na to, ibig sabihin, yan na rin yung value niya at the present date, which is the present value. Again, ito yung present value for this particular cash flow, yung ating first cash flow. Then, dito tayo sa second na 20,000 pesos. So, dito ang formula natin is 1.10 raised to negative 1. So, negative 1 siya kasi may dadaang isang compounding period bago natin ma-receive itong second na 20,000. Kaya, itong ating exponent, negative 1. At pag minultiply yan sa 20,000 pesos, ang sagot ay 18,182 pesos. And for the third 20,000 pesos, ang formula natin is 1.10 raised to negative 2. Again, negative 2 ang ating exponent kasi dadaan ang dalawang compounding period bago natin ma-receive itong 20,000 pesos na to. So, ang sagot dyan is 16,529 pesos. Then, dito sa pang-apat, na 20,000 pesos since dadaan ang tatlong compounding periods bago ito ma-receive ang formula natin is 1.10 raised to negative 3 ang sagot dyan is 15,026 pesos so lastly, ang ating panglimang 20,000 pesos bago natin ma-receive to dadaan ang apat na compounding periods kaya ang ating exponent will be negative 4 at ang sagot kapag minultiply natin 20,000 times 1.10 raised to negative 4 is 13,660 pesos. So, eto mga amount na yan, every amount is the present value of each future cash flow. And since ang tanong natin is magkana dapat yung single amount na present value para makareceive tayo ng ganitong mga cash flows in the future, so ang present value natin of all future cash flows is yung total ng lima. So, yan ay 83,397 pesos. Again, yung 83,397 pesos, ito dapat yung single amount na dapat mong i-deposito on day 1 para makareceive ka ng 20,000 every year at the start of each year. So, take note, yung exponent nyo is very crucial. So, ang exponent natin is based doon sa number of compounding periods na dadaanan ng cash flow. Hindi kung pang ilang cash flow siya sa timeline natin. Katulad nito, itong last na 20,000 is pang lima sa mga marireceive natin. Pero hindi negative 5 ang ating exponent. So, ito yung difference ng annuity due from ordinary annuity. So, ito yung procedure natin to compute for the present value na 83,397 kung ang computation natin ng present value is based doon sa formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1. So, isa-isa natin yung kinompute. Pero, pwede tayong gumamit ng single formula to directly compute the 83,397 present value. So, ano yung formula natin for annuity due? So, ang formula natin is same with the ordinary annuity formula. So, yun yung 1 minus 1 plus i raised to negative n divided by I. Yun nga lang, meron tayong additional. May idudugtong tayo dyan, which is times 1 plus I. So, kapag dinagdag natin tong additional na to, so, eto na yung pinaka-formula natin for the present value ng annuity due. So, eto yung gagamitin natin para makompute yung 83,397 ng isang bagsakan. So, isubstitute na natin yung ating mga Variables. So, ang ating variables is, ayan. So, 1 plus 0.10 raised to negative 5. Tapos, i-minus natin yan sa 1 divided by 0.10. Tapos, times natin sa 1.10. So, ang sagot dyan, pag ginamit mo ang iyong calculator is 
4.16986 So again, yung ating exponent, yung n, ito yung number of compounding periods for the whole term. So since meron tayong limang compounding period for 5 years kasi ang ating compounding period is on an annual basis, so kaya ito ay 5. So ang tawag natin dito sa product natin is the present value factor of annuity due. So itong ating present value factor. Siyempre, for 5 periods. Siyempre, ang purpose ng ating present value factor of annuity due is multiply natin to sa future cash flows. And again, gagamitin lang natin to kung ang future cash flows ay pare-parehas at sila ay receive or babayaran in equal interval. So ito, 20,000 naman siya, pare-parehas at equal naman kasi every one year bago sila matatanggap. So, 20,000 multiplied by the present value factor of annuity due, ang sagot dyan is 83,397 pesos. So, ito yung pinakamabilis na way to compute for the present value factor of all future cash flows if those future cash flows will be received at the start of every compounding period. Pero, again, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, kung medyo nahirapan kang i-memorize itong formula na to, pwede ka pa rin bumalik sa basic. Gamitin mo yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1. Yun nga lang, mas matrabaho siya kasi kailangan mong isa-isahin bawat cash flows every compounding period. So, lastly, dito naman tayo sa example number 4 for present value computation. So, meron lang tayo ritong tatlong future cash flows. So, magkakaiba yung cash flows natin in the future at yung gap nila, yung interval of collection is magkakaiba din. So, so hindi rito mag apply yung ordinary annuity at yung annuity due. So, hindi natin yun magagamit. So, ang magagamit lang natin ng formula is yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1. So, unahin natin yung 20,000 pesos. So, using the same formula again, so, etong 20,000 pesos, syempre, bago natin ma-receive to, dadaan ng isang compounding period. Kaya, ang formula natin to get the present value of 20,000 pesos is 1.10 raised to negative 1. At ang sagot dyan is 18,182 pesos. Then, yung 30,000 pesos natin na second cash flow in the future, para ma-receive to, dadaan muna ang tatlong compounding periods. Kaya, ang ating exponent is 1.10 raised to negative 3. At ang sagot dyan, kapag minultiply yan sa 30,000 pesos, is 22,539 pesos. And lastly, yung ating last cash flow, which is the 50,000 pesos, dadaan ang limang compounding periods bago natin ma-receive to. Kaya ang ating exponent will be negative 5. So, 50,000 multiplied by 1.10 raised to negative 5 is equals to 31,046 pesos. At ang present value of all future cash flows is 71,767. Again, yung 71,767, ito dapat yung single amount na dapat nating i-deposit on day 1. Para makareceive tayo ng 20,000 at the end of first year, 30,000 at the end of third year, at 50,000 at the end of fifth year. So, yan na yung total ng tatlong present value. So, kung papansin niyo kahit ano pa yung pattern or timing ng ating cash flows, pwede tayong gumamit ng iisang formula. At yun yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1, which is only 1 plus i raised to negative n. Pero in case of ordinary annuity and annuity due, meron tayong specific formula para sa kanila which is mapapadali yung ating computation. Again, kung ordinary annuity siya o kaya annuity due. So ngayon, let us now proceed to the future value computation. So, unahin natin example number 1. So, sabi niya, an investor deposited 100,000 pesos in time deposit. How much should he receive at the end of 5 years if he earns an interest of 12% that is compounded annually? So, dito sa example number 1, meron tayong ididiposito which is 100,000 pesos. So, it means yung 100,000 pesos is an outflow. 
So, baka tayo nag-deposit sa time deposit kasi may aantayin tayo for 5 years. Na at the end daw of 5 years, mababawi natin itong 100,000 pesos na to plus interest. Magkano yung interest? 12% that is compounded on an annual basis. So, based daw sa information na to, na ang time deposit natin has a term of 5 years at it earns a 12% interest compounded annually, magkano daw ang receive natin at the end of the term of the time deposit, which is 5 years. And yun yung future value. Kasi syempre, if today is day 1, so at the end of 5 years, yun ay future as far as the present day is concerned. Ngayon, for example, number 2, an investor deposited 20,000 pesos in time deposit at the end of each year. How much will he receive after 5 years if it earns an interest of 12% that is compounded annually? So, for example, number 2, same pa din ang tanong as in example number 1. Magkano daw ang receive natin after 5 years? Kung tutubo yung ating deposit ng 12% interest compounded annually. Ang difference lang is yung ating magiging deposit. Kasi yung deposit natin dito is 20,000 pesos. At yung 20,000 pesos will be deposited in the time deposit at the end of each year. So hindi isang bagsakan ang deposit natin dito. Taon-taon magde-deposit tayo sa time deposit. Unlike dito sa example number 1, isang bagsakan yung deposit natin ng 100,000 pesos. Pero dito sa example number 2, yung 100,000 pesos natin will be deposited equally at the end of each year for 5 years. Then for example number 3, an investor deposited 20,000 pesos in time deposit at the start of each year. How much will he receive after 5 years if it earns an interest of 12% that is compounded annually? So yung example number 3 natin ay halos pareha sa example number 2. The only difference is yung timing ng 20,000 deposit annually. Kasi dito sa example number 2, ang 20,000 will be deposited every year to wing end ng kada taon. Pero dito sa example number 3, yung 20,000 deposit will be deposited at the start of each year. Ngayon, punta tayo sa example number 4. An investor deposited the following amounts at the start of first year, 50,000 pesos. Third year, 30,000 pesos. And fifth year, 20,000 pesos. How much will he receive after 5 years if it earns an interest of 12% that is compounded annually? So, dito naman for example number 4, yung deposit natin ay hindi uli isang bagsakan. So, yung deposit natin will be a series of deposits which is 50,000, 30,000, and 20,000. Yun nga lang, yung timing ng mga deposits ay iba-iba. Yung una is at the start of first year, then yung pangalawa start ng third year, and yung pangatlo is start ng fifth year. Pero yung question, ganun pa rin. Magkano ang receive natin at the end of fifth year? Kung ang mga deposits na gagawin natin ay tumutubo ng 12%, interest that is compounded on an annual basis. So, ngayon, before we again proceed to the actual computation, gawin muna uli natin yung ating mga timeline. So, kailangan nating malaman yung timing ng ating cash flow. And again, when we say cash flow, dalawa yan. It is either a cash inflow or a cash outflow. So, yun yung, so yun na kailangan nating ma-identify, yung cash inflow at cash outflow. Kung magkano sila at kailan tayo magkakaroon ng cash inflow at cash outflow. Kasi yung amount at saka yung timing, importante yon sa pag-compute ng ating future value computation. Same with the present value computation. Importante yung amount ng cash flow at saka yung timing ng cash flow para mag-compute ng either future value or present value. So, unahin natin sa example number 1. So, for example number 1, ang sabi natin, ang deposit natin is 100,000. So, yung 100,000 pesos na yun, since that is a deposit, so maglalabas tayo ng pera. Ibig sabihin, outflow yun. So, kailan tayo maglalabas ng pera? So, naglabas tayo ng pera sa day 1, 100,000 pesos. So, yan na yung present value natin. Kasi, yung 100,000, yan yung mismong cash outflow natin. At ilalagay natin yan sa time deposit, which earns a 12% annual interest. 
So, in-expect natin na at the end of the fifth year, yung term ng time deposit, makaka-receive tayo ng amount. Ibig sabihin dito, at the end of the fifth year, may marireceive tayo, which is a cash inflow. Pero, hindi siya given. Ang tanging given kasi na amount is yung 100,000 pesos na outflow, which is the value at the present date. Kaya, itong 100,000 pesos is a present value. Pero, hindi given yung amount na may receive natin after 5 years. Yun yung kukumpitin natin. And that is the future value. So, hindi yung given. So, that is to be computed. So, for example, number 2, ang sabi niya, maglalabas tayo ng 20,000 pesos at ide-deposito natin yun in the time deposit. Pero, ano yung timing tuwing kailan tayo magde-deposito ng 20,000 pesos? Ang sabi sa example number 2, magde-deposito tayo ng 20,000 pesos at the end of every year. So, ang first 20,000 natin will be deposited at the end of the first year, tapos at the end of the second year until the end of the fifth year. So, these are cash outflows. So, maglalabas tayo ng pera dyan. So, these are all cash outflows. So, ito yung ilalagay natin sa ating time deposit which will earn a 12% annual interest. Tapos, syempre, kung may ilalabas tayong pera, meron tayong matatanggap na pera. Yun yung cash inflow natin. Yun yung marireceive natin after ng term ng time deposit. At kailan yun? So, that is at the end of 5th year. So, ibig sabihin, at the end of the 5th year, meron tayong marireceive. Yun yung kukumpitin natin. So, yun yung future value. And kung titingnan nyo, ang ating mga cash flows is pare-parehas na 20,000 pesos. So, they are equal in amount. At, yung interval nila is also similar. Kasi, every one year, di ba? Yung 20,000 pesos will be deposited in the time deposit every year. And since ito is a series of equal payments in equal intervals made at the end of every period, ibig sabihin, this is an example of ordinary annuity. So, dito naman tayo sa example number 3. So, for example number 3, ganun din. Same with example number 2. Um, yung cash flows natin is also 20,000 pesos annually. Pero, yung timing, iba. Unlike sa example number 2, yung timing ng 20,000 pesos is every end of the year. Pero sa example number 3, ang timing ng 20,000 pesos is at the start of every year. Kaya sa day 1 pa lang, meron na tayong idideposito sa ating time deposit. Kaya ang timing ng cash flows natin, specifically cash outflow, is 20,000 pesos limang beses. So, yan ang difference niya from example number 2. Same sila ng amount, pero yung timing ang magkaiba. Kasi sa example number 2, the cash outflows are made at the end, pero sa example number 3, ang cash outflows are made at the start of every year. Pero yung cash inflow, which will happen at the end of the fifth year, hindi yung given. So, yun yung kukumpite natin. At since yun ay at the end pa of fifth year, so, yun yung future value. And, ganun ulit, since etong mga amounts na to ay equal in amounts, tapos equal intervals, pero made at the start of the year, so this is an example of an annuity due. Then, last tayo sa example number 4. So, for example number 4, yung timing natin, yung amount ng ating deposit, which are all cash flows, given siya. So, lahat ng cash outflow natin for the deposit are given. And these are 50,000, 30,000, and 20,000. At ito yung timing ng ating cash deposits na gagawin. So, dito pa lang sa day 1, meron na tayong i-deposit na 50,000. Then, sabi, sabi, at the start of the third year, so, ibig sabihin, end of year to yun, so, magde-deposit din tayo ng 30,000 pesos. And at the start of fifth year, magde-deposit tayo ng 20,000 pesos. So, these are the amounts of cash outflow at ito yung mga timing kung kailan sila i-deposito. So, again, these are all cash outflows. 
eh ano yung ating cash inflow? Yung cash inflow natin mangyayari at the end of fifth year, which is not given. Kasi yun yung kukumpitin natin. And yun yung ating magiging future value. So, ngayon, let us proceed to example number one. So, for example number one, so sabi natin dito, magkakaroon tayo ng cash outflow, which is our deposit. So, kailan natin gagawin yung ating deposit? So, that will be on day one. So, dito pa lang tayo ay maglalabas ng 100,000 pesos at ilalagay natin sa time deposit. So, that is an outflow. So, syempre, ta kaya tayo ay naglabas ng 100,000 pesos for the time deposit kasi nag expect tayo na after 5 years, maibabalik sa atin to. Syempre, plus interest. At mangyayari yun, syempre, at the end of the term of the time deposit, which is 5 years. So, yun yung ating magiging cash in. So, magkano yung magiging inflow natin at the end of 5 years? So, magkocompute tayo. Gagamitin natin yung ating future value na formula. Which in this case, ang formula natin is 1 plus i raised to positive n. So, kung titingnan nyo, medyo hawig siya dun sa ating present value na formula, na equation. Yun nga lang, the difference is yung exponent na n. Kasi yung n dito positive, pero dun sa present value computation, yung n is a negative. So, again, what is the meaning of i? So, that is the interest per compounding period. Then, yung n is, again, the number of compounding period. So, kung tayo ay may 5-year term for the time deposit, tapos, ang ating compounding period is also every year. So, annually ang ating compounding period. So, meron tayong limang compounding period during the 5-year term ng ating time deposit. Kasi nga, ang ating compounding period is every year. So, ngayon, isubstitute na natin yung ating given na data. So, ang gamit nating formula is 1 plus 0.12 raised to positive 5. So, syempre, ang ating annual interest is 12%. Then, 5 ang ating exponent kasi meron tayong limang compounding period na dadaanan bago mag-end ang 5 years. Kaya, para makompute ang ating future value is 100,000 pesos times 1.12 raised to positive 5 kung ang gamit mo ay scientific calculator. Ang sagot dyan is 176,234 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, at the end of 5 years, magkakaroon tayo ng inflow na 176,234. So, dito sa inflow na to, nabawi na natin yung 100,000 pesos. Tapos, nagkaroon ng interest, which is at 12% compounded annually. O kaya naman, kung wala kang scientific calculator, makukompute mo to by multiplying 100,000 pesos times 1.12 ng limang beses. So, syempre, ang sagot doon parehas pa rin. 176,234. So, ngayon, punta naman tayo dito sa ating next example. So, this time, ordinary annuity. So, ito ang ating cash flows. Again, itong mga 20,000 pesos na to, these are all cash outflows. So, ito yung mga perang ilalabas natin at ilalagay natin sa time deposit. And syempre, may ina-expect tayong receive after the end of 5th year. And yun syempre ay inflow kasi marireceive natin yun which is a future value so kung titingnan natin yung outflow natin limang beses pero yung inflow natin isang beses lang which is at the end of fifth year gamit yung ating formula sa example 1 which is yung 1 plus i raised to positive n so pwede natin gamitin yun yun nga lang gagamitin natin yun isa isa per cash outflow. So, unahin natin itong unang 20,000 pesos. So, again, ang ating formula will be 1 plus 0.12 tapos yung ating exponent, syempre, is kung ilang compounding period yung dadaanan niya hanggang makarating siya sa end ng 5th year. 
At since itong unang 20,000 pesos na to is already at the end of 5th year, which is wala na siyang dinaan ng compounding period, kaya ang ating formula is 1.12 raised to 0. Which is, kapag minultiply natin sa 20,000, ang sagot is also 20,000 pesos. So again, kaya 0 ang exponent kasi wala siyang dinaan ng compounding period kasi itong 20,000 pesos na to is already at the end of 5th year. Pero dito sa pangalawang 20,000 na to, bago siya makarating ng 5th year, may dadaanan siyang compounding period. Yun nga lang, isa. Kaya ang kanyang exponent is positive 1. So kaya ang ating future value is 22,400 which is computed as 20,000 pesos times 1.12 raised to positive 1. So, that is 22,400. Tapos, ito namang 20,000 na ilalabas natin at 3rd year. So, syempre, bago, sy bago niya ma-reach yung 5th year, dadaan siya ng dalawang compounding period. Kaya, ang exponent natin is positive 2. Tapos, ang sagot is 25,088. At na-compute to as 20,000 times 1.12 squared. Then, etong 20,000 na ilalabas natin sa second year, ito ay dadaan ng tatlong compounding period bago makarating ng fifth year. Kaya, ang ating exponent dyan is positive 3. Kaya, ang sagot dyan is 28,099 which is computed as 20,000 multiplied by 1.12 raised to positive 3. Tapos, Yung unang-unang 20,000 na ating ilalabas, which is at the end of first year, syempre, bago niya ma-reach yung fifth year, dadaan siya ng apat na compounding period, kaya ang kanyang exponent is 4. At ang sagot dyan is 31,470 pesos, which is computed as 20,000 multiplied by 1.12 raised to positive 4. So, eto mga amounts na to, eto ang mga future value nung ating mga ilalabas na 20,000 at the end of every year. Kaya, ang ating total na may -re receive isang bagsakan to na amount na may -re receive natin at the end of 5th year, has a total of 127,057 pesos. So, gamit yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1, ginamit natin yung formula ng limang beses. Kasi meron tayong limang cash flow dito. So, ibig sabihin, yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1, magagamit natin yun for every cash flow. Yun nga lang, kung masyadong madami yung cash flow mo, masyadong madami din na beses gagamitin mo yung formula. Katulad nito, since lima yung cash flow natin, ginamit natin yung formula ng limang beses. What if yung cash flow mo dyan ay nasa 10 o kaya 20? So, medyo mahirap yun, di ba? na gamitin yung formula na ginamit natin sa example number 1 which is yung 1 plus i raised to positive n. Kasi, kung computein mo yun, isa-isa. Pero, since ang ating cash flow dito is an ordinary annuity which is a series of equal cash flow so equal lahat yan, 20,000 pesos in equal intervals. Kasi, equal interval siya kasi every year tayo nagkakaroon ng cash flow, outflow, na 20,000 pesos. Since equal yung amount, tapos equal din yung interval, at yung cash flow is always at the end of the year, or at the end of the compounding period, kaya siya ordinary annuity. So, kaya pwede tayong gumamit ng isang formula kung yung series of cash flow is considered as an ordinary annuity. At ang formula natin doon is, eto, 1 plus i, raised to positive n, tapos minus 1, then divided by i. So ngayon, ganun pa rin yung ibig sabihin ng i and n. So substitute lang natin. So, ang, so kapag substitute natin yung ating information, so ito ang ating equation. So 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to positive 5. 5 siya kasi sa term ng time deposit, meron tayong limang compounding period. Tapos minus 1. Then, divided by 0 0.12. Ang sagot dyan is 6.35284736, which is, yan ang tinatawag nating future value factor of ordinary annuity. 
So, paano natin gagamitin yan? So, i-multiply natin yan sa ating series of equal cash flow which is 20,000 pesos. So, kaya 20,000 pesos, multiply natin yung factor of ordinary annuity. Ang sagot niyan, syempre, ay parehas lang dapat which is also 127,057 pesos. So, kung masyadong madami yung compounding periods at masyadong madami yung cash flow, pwede natin gamitin itong formula na to para isahang computation lang ang ating gagawin. Pero kung halimbawa nakalimutan mo tong formula na to, meron ka pa ring pwedeng magamit which is yung formula natin na ginamit sa example number 1. Yun nga lang, tatrabahuhin mo talaga siya isa-isa. So, let us now proceed to the third example. So, ang third example natin is annuity due. So, again, paano ito naging annuity due? So, let us plot our timeline. So, itong ating timeline, again, meron tayong 5 years na term. So, kaya siya naging annuity due dahil meron tayong series of equal payments. At yung series of equal payments natin ay to be deposited at the start of every compounding period. So, meron tayo rito ng limang 20,000 pesos that will be deposited at the start of each year. Kasi ang ating compounding period, again, is annually. So, ang question natin is, magkano daw ang ating marireceive after the end of the 5-year term? After we have deposited yung 20,000 each year during the 5-year term. So, unahin natin itong nasa dulo na 20,000 pesos, which is at the start of the 5th year. So, gamit ang formula again for future value na 1 plus i raised to positive n. So, ang formula natin dito is 1.12 raised to positive 1. So, bakit positive 1? Kasi yung number of compounding period na dadaanan niya para makakarating siya ng end ng term natin is only 1. So, isa na lang ang compounding period na dadaanan niya kaya ito ay positive 1. So, kapag minultiply natin itong 20,000 pesos times 1.12 raised to positive 1, that is 22,400. Then, dito naman tayo sa 20,000 na pangalawa. So, ang formula natin dito is 1.12 squared. So, bakit positive 2 ang kanyang exponent? Kasi, meron siyang dalawang compounding period na dadaanan bago siya makarating dito sa end ng ating term. So, pag minultiply natin itong 20,000 times 1.12 raised to positive 2 or 1.12 squared, that is 25,088 pesos. Then, dito tayo sa pangatlong 20,000, ang ating formula naman dito is 1.12 cube or 1.12 raised to positive 3. So, bakit positive 3? Kasi tatlo ang compounding period na dadaanan niya bago siya makarating dito sa ating end of the term. At pag minultiply natin ang 20,000 sa 1.12 raised to positive 3, that is 28,099 pesos. Then, dito naman sa ating 20,000 pesos, at the start of the second year, ang ating formula would be 1.12 raised to positive 4. And bakit positive 4? Kasi nga meron tayong apat na compounding period na dadaanan niya bago siya makarating sa end of the term. So that is 31,470 pesos. And lastly, yung ating unang-unang 20,000 pesos which is at the start of the first year. So, ang ating exponent dyan is positive 5. Kasi nga, may limang compounding period siyang dadaanan bago siya makarating sa end of the term. 20,000 times 1.12 raised to positive 5, that is 35,247 pesos. At para makumpute natin yung total amount na may receive natin at the end of the fifth year, Kailangan nating ikuhain ang sum of the 5 future value. So, meron tayong 142,304. Ito yung total or ito yung summation ng limang future value na nakompute natin. At ito ay 142,304. So, ito yung marireceive natin at the end of 5th year of the term. So, since ito ay annuity due, so pwede tayong gumamit ng isang formula lang para makompute natin yung future value of these cash flows. So, ang formula natin for the future value computation ng annuity due is similar to the ordinary annuity. So, parehas ang formula, yun nga lang merong twist. So, ang formula natin kanina sa computation natin ng future value ng ordinary annuity is 
1 plus i raised to positive n, tapos minus 1, tsaka all over i. So, eto yung formula natin kanina sa ordinary annuity. So, para maging annuity d'yo yan, meron tayong idudugtong, and that is 1 plus i. So, i-multiply natin ito sa sagot dito. So, yan yung ating formula for annuity d'yo. Annuity d'yo. So, pag sinubstitute natin lahat ng variables, so ito yung magiging labas niyan. So, 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to positive 5. So, yung n natin dito would be the total compounding periods during the term. For the whole term, dito sa ating problem, meron tayong limang compounding periods in total. Kaya yun yung ating n. That's minus 1, then divided by 0 0.12 times 1.12. Kasi ang ating interest is 12%. So, pag kinompute natin ito, either gamitin yung inyong scientific calculator or yung regular calculator nyo, ang sagot dyan is 7.11518943. At ang tawag natin dyan is the future value factor of annuity due. And syempre, for 5 periods. So, anong purpose nitong FV factor? So, i-multiply natin ito sa ating series of cash flow. At ang ating series of equal cash flow is 20,000 pesos. Kaya, 20,000 times 7.11518943 is equals to, syempre, yun din dapat ang sagot. 142,304. So, kaya, kagaya kanina sa ordinary annuity, either procedure, gamitin nyo man itong mahabang formula, or isa-isahin nyo ang computation, dapat mag arrive siya sa similar na sagot, which is 142,304. Yun nga lang, kung gusto nyo ng mabilis ang computation, dapat memorize nyo itong formula na to. Pero kung hindi nyo kaya ma-memorize itong formula na to, so maisasalba naman tayo ng computation natin sa example number 1, which is yung formula lang na as simple as 1 plus i raised to positive n. Yun nga lang, medyo matrabaho to kasi kailangan natin isa-isahin ang kada cash flow para makompute yung future value isa-isa. So, ngayon, punta naman tayo sa example number 4 natin. So, ito ang ating example number 4. Kung titingnan natin, series of cash flow din siya pero hindi siya equal series of cash flow. Kasi sa unang payment natin, meron tayong 50,000, then 30,000, tsaka 20,000. So, unequal siya, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, hindi natin pwedeng gamitin yung formula ng ordinary annuity or yung annuity due. Kasi para magamit natin yung shortcut na formula for ordinary annuity and annuity due, dapat yung cash flows ay equal ang amounts. So, instead... Ang pwede natin gamitin is yung formula natin sa example number 1 which is yung 1 plus i raised to positive n para ma-compute yung future value. So, unahin natin yung 20,000 pesos. And again, yung n na gagamitin natin is yung number of compounding periods na dadaanan niya bago siya makarating ng end of the term which is the end of 5th year. So, ang formula natin is 1.12 raised to positive 1. So, dahil isa lang ang dadaanin niya compounding period bago siya makarating ng 5th year, so positive 1 to. So, 20,000 times 1.12 raised to positive 1, that is 22,400. Then, para naman sa 30,000, so ang magiging exponent natin is 3. Kasi may tatlong compounding periods na dadaanin siya bago niya marating ang 5th year. So, that is 30,000 times 1.12 raised to positive 3, that is 42,147 pesos. And lastly, yung 50,000 natin, that is 1.12 raised to positive 5. So, 5 ang ating exponent kasi 5 ang compounding period sa kanyang dadaanan bago niya marating ang end of the term. So, pag minultiply natin yan, ang sagot is 88,177 pesos. So, ito ang mga future value ng mga deposits nating ito. So, magkano ang total future value na marireceive natin at the end of 5th year? So, ang summation niyan is 152,725. And ito ang total amount na receive natin at the end of 5th year for example number 4.